But first tonight, the University of Sydney locked pro-Palestinian activists inside a room with senior Israeli university officials for an hour and a half last week. Tel Aviv University representatives flew from Israel to attend the University of Sydney's Abroad Fair, which promotes their university exchange program. The Israeli academics were there alongside other university representatives from Germany, Canada, the United States and Taiwan. But pro-Palestinian activists stormed the room trying to get the Tel Aviv University kicked off campus. We can end this system which sees the butchers of Gaza come to UCIT's campus, sees UCIT students pushed out for speaking about Palestine, while the people who are literally responsible get their own store with a private security guard. Tel Aviv University plays an active role in, in training IDF lawyers. We want them off our campus. The Israeli delegates didn't think that they should have to succumb to the demands of the protesters and leave, seeing as they'd flown from Israel for this. Shockingly, instead of removing the pro-Palestinian activists, Sydney University had security lock the doors, locking the activists inside the same room as the Israeli delegates. Let, just that, let that just sink in for a minute. Instead of simply removing the Palestinian activists who were causing the disruption, which the University of Sydney could have done, they locked the activists in the same room as the two Israeli academics they were protesting against. And both of the Israeli officials, by the way, are women. These, we're about to show you the footage now, these are the women from the Tel Aviv University who were sitting there just trying to do the, their own jobs, the work that they were invited to the University of Sydney from Israel to do. Shame! Yeah. So it, it isn't just a question of boycotting an, an Israeli institution. It's a, it's a question of forcing the university, which plays an active, violent, aggressive role in supporting Israel's apartheid. It's a question of getting that out of campus and then showing that this campus supports Palestine, this campus opposes apartheid, and there is no room for any genocidal institution at Sydney Uni. So you could see the two women at the table there and their security official moved in front of one of them. One of the women who was locked in the room is Tel Aviv University's vice president, Milet Shamir. You can see her on your screen now. Now, there were other academics at the other stands around the room in the background and students were meant to be visiting their desks to discuss exchanges with universities in Germany, Israel, Taiwan, Canada and the United States. But the protesters disrupted it all. Now, there's footage that you can see from inside the room where the University of Sydney's own security guards are standing outside guarding the door. Have a look. Now, sources close to Tel Aviv University tell me that they were inside the room with the pro-Palestinian activists for an hour and a half. They were shocked and upset that the protesters weren't removed. At times, I'm told that the protesters yelled and berated the Israeli university representatives. And while they were locked in the room, the activists then started filming for online. They had so much time. They accused Israel of genocide and they demanded a boycott of all Israeli services. And we stand against the state of Israel and we will keep occupying, we'll keep fighting, keep striking until we make Israel a pariah state and we make it clear that there are no Israeli institutions welcome at UCID Woo! or on Gadigal land yeah. anywhere. Campus supports Palestine. Uh, we, need, we need to protest this university off of campus. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! Yeah, we have completely shut down this building. 
Well, the activists also claimed that there were members of the Nas National Tertiary Education Union who had gathered and were blockading outside. Outside at the front, we have rank and file members of the NTEU blockading the entrance. Yeah. Inside, we have members of the student body standing yeah, in, in solidarity with Palestine. Is the NTEU has brought rank and file members, they have left their lunch break, they are standing outside to say <laughs> we stand with the students who are locked in here, locked in here on a very hot day, some of us are fasting, locked in here, and we absolutely are, are making a stand, and they're out there supporting us on their lunch break. I think it's so important if you're on campus right now to get down here because we need to make sure the university can see that we do not support its, um, its uh, connections with Israeli university. Now, as you heard, that pro-Palestinian activist there, she said they were locked inside on a hot day. She said some of them were fasting, locked inside. Well, after an hour and a half, the Tel Aviv University staff accepted the protest wasn't going to end. They were clearly not going to engage with students who were interested in the exchange program and they were escorted to a car. You can see them leaving there. Well, the pro-Palestinian activists celebrated the Israeli delegates leaving and they said, and listen to this, they said that the Israelis left in, and I quote, fear. They slunk away in cowardice in fear. Is that seriously the climate we want here in Australia, where Israeli delegates have to leave in cowardice and fear? Of course we need free speech and obviously we can have disagreements about Israel's war on Hamas. But how can we have an environment where invited Israeli officials and senior officials have to slink away in fear? This is disgraceful. And then another student said this. We actually shut down the exchange program that was happening. There was a stall for the Tel Aviv University to go on exchange um, to, to Tel Aviv. And we actually shut that down. They have, they have uh, given up, they've gone home, and we have successfully shut it down. We want to make sure that this campus is 100% a Palestinian friendly campus. In the lies, cut the ties. And the lies cut the ties. And the lies cut the ties. And the lies cut the ties. So they're celebrating that they've shut down the whole exchange program that was being promoted. Who is running the show? This is once again a case of Jews being punished through no fault of their own while just trying to do their day to day business. And this is also a harassment issue. A university that would presumably espouse values of tolerance has allowed a bunch of extremist activists who don't support Israel's right to exist to disrupt and destroy a collaborative exchange session and then allow the Palestinian activists a free reign to harass and intimidate the senior university staff. This is persecution, harassment and intimidation. Well, what does the University of Sydney have to say about this? Well, a spokesperson told us this evening that the incident was under investigation. They said, we're always working to ensure all our students, staff and visitors feel safe and welcome on our campuses and are aware of an incident that took place at this year's study abroad partner event. As an additional precaution this year, we hosted Tel Aviv University at our law school and Susan Wakel Health Building, where we had security in place. There was a protest that disrupted proceedings and some security measures were taken to ensure the safety of our community. At no time was any person locked in or detained. We have a rich history of activism and protest on our campuses and all students and staff have the right to express themselves freely as long as it's done safely and in accordance with our policies and the law. Protests may be rowdy and spirited, but they cannot interfere with the rights and freedoms of others and this incident is under investigation. We support our students' right to express their opinions in a safe and respectful way and recently communi communicated to our community about our expectations of our staff and students at this challenging time. Well, the University of Sydney's Vice-Chancellor, Mark Scott, 
was previously the managing director at the ABC. I think it's pretty clear that he could be doing more to get anti-Semitism under control at the university. Just a few days before this unfolded, an anti-Israel University of Sydney academic, Nick Rima, started tweeting about the Tel Aviv University staff who were going to be visiting. And he said on Twitter or X that it was criminal that Sydney Uni is hosting Tel Aviv Uni at its study abroad fair. He said it was an institution directly responsible for the violent dispossession and murder of Palestinians. A claim, of course, that has no basis in fact. But this is the University of Sydney's own academic. And he then tweeted that both staff and students were protesting against the Tel Aviv University being present at the Sydney University Exchange Fair. Well, the bigger, more broader question that we have to look at is how young Jewish Australians are dealing with these extremist views day in and day out. Here is how one of those pro-Palestinian activists described what it's like every day at the University of Sydney. This university, which by the way is so pro-Palestine, every time I walk on campus, all I see is Palestinian flags, all I see is Palestinian flags. That's the University of Sydney. Look, while many of you watching this tonight will know someone who's experienced anti-Semitism, whether it's at work or on the commute to work or on social media, the universities are the coal face of the problem. It's our young Jewish Australians who study hard at school, are lucky enough to then get into one of Australia's most prestigious universities, the University of Sydney, and then they have to come face to face with intense anti-Semitism on a daily basis. We are seeing no leadership on any of this. And this is the worst anti-Semitism crisis we've ever had in this country, in Australia. And the reason is because Anthony Albanese, our Prime Minister, well, when he was young, he was one of these anti-Israel protesters shouting into the megaphone. 